Right now we're in the beginnings of the finishing department and what you're looking at is are the poles that were cast last night. You, you can see still the, the baked on uh, sand, a lot of the gates and risers, the chaplets, all of these will be taken off. But this is when the pole starts to become what it is, this beautiful decorative element going from start to finish. Now after these poles sit and cool, they're taken over to the blast room. And we utilize a steel shot and grit. And the worker will come in here in his protective suit and shoot these poles with a blast gun, which you can see takes it down to bare metal from the grit and the steel shot. So all the baked sand and any of the impurities that were left on the casting are removed. Uh, we're still in the finishing department and what you're looking at right now are some of the Washington twin cross arms. It's actually upside down. You see these areas here. This is where the fixtures slide on. It's a, it's a twin cross arm, so two luminaires go on top of it. But you can see the decorative element, and the and the arm is starting to come into its own of what you know, showing the detail, grinding off any of the harsh um, flashings or or debris that's on the casting when we um, when we pull it out of the mold. What you're looking at here is again some more of the the hard finishing, getting off some of the chaplets, cleaning off any of the debris that's again been cast into the pole. This is a standard process and again the poles and the shafts are starting to come into the finished product. This particular gentleman is, is grinding a two-piece number 16 pole that we utilized in the city of Washington, D.C. This is a column that rotolocks into one of the bases that as we walk by we'll probably see one. And that goes into the top of the base and is permanently locked into the cast base. Again, more finishing department. These are small fixture casings for the city of Philadelphia. Some hinges for some luminaires. This particular gentleman is making, is grinding one of the cast electrical junction boxes I talked about. These boxes are, are placed into the ground or the below bridges and, and utilized for pool boxes or to house um, transitional electrical wow. connections on bridges, streetways. still a formidable business for Spring City and we've actually seen a resurgence in it because of the cast iron. It's so durable and lasts so much longer than any of the composite boxes or cement boxes that are used over the last 10 to 15 years. What we're witnessing right now is Jake Bray, an employee who's been here for almost 10 plus years, is what's called a swing grinder and he's taking this heavy grinder and grinding off those chaplets that you see those little portions of casting sticking up outside of the shaft. Those are what's, what's supporting the core. Parts of them are still sticking out and he's grinding them off in any of the other rough finishes. This is probably the one portion of the pro of, of grinding that's the most rough on the, the pole, removing all of the of gating or, or castings and, and chaplets that are sticking out of the shaft. What you see here is a gentleman doing some of the fine sanding on one of the Washington poles we talked about that had been casted this morning.
You'll notice too on the casting itself, these particular poles are going to a project in Tennessee called Duck River Walk. And you'll see a square up top here and some embossings on the casting. That's for a GFI receptacle. And one of the things, because we're a founder and our custom capabilities allow us to, is to pass this embossment into the pole so that we're not mechanically attaching anything, nor are we uh, doing any welding. So this is actually cast into the pole and not other man manufacturers really can't, or don't have those capabilities because they're not doing the actual uh, work. They're buying the product, bringing it in, where we're making the product, customizing the cooling area, and being able to put banner arm embossments or GFI receptacles, or again, as we talked about, decorative seals and any other flag bracket or custom applications that are needed for these particular poles. Right now, we're, we're in the area where that does some prime finish painting. And, and what we're doing right now is priming the bishop's crook posts and then we'll stand them up and our QC director and inspectors will come along and check the poles out for any imperfections. We like to prime the poles uh, before we inspect them because the prime paint seems to show some of the imperfections a lot better and, and doesn't hide any of them and we're able to identify them quickly. They'll come along with a black sharpie, mark the areas that need to be retouched. They'll go back into the finishing room, retouched and then brought out and prime painted again. It's another step added um, that some other manufacturers may not feel is necessary. We believe that it is because it enables us to really go over the poles with a fine tooth comb and make sure that the customer is getting a product that, with an elegant cast and an ornate detail. Right now we're at one of the welding stations in the, in the uh, machine and assembly process. Tim Donning, one of our employees that's been here close to 30 years is welding one of the CCD fixtures that actually we're using for Lansdale, Pennsylvania. And he's closing up one of the door locations on the fixture fitter. Tim is an AWS certified welder um, that requires uh, certain classes to attend and maintain his his constant certification and a lot of PennDOT projects uh, require that as well as Department of Transportation. Where we're at now is in the machine shop. I spoke earlier about uh, Spring City manufacturing electro electrical junction boxes. This is a cast iron junction box that we're providing for, I believe, New York City. These junction boxes are used in bridge decks, uh, streetways, roadways, and it's still a viable business that we participate in. Right now we're at one of our four CNC machines. This Haas machine is a computer numerical controlled unit that and now what we're doing right now is we're drilling and facing um, one of our LED lids for our Franklin Square unit. And he's set up the jig and eventually this thing will turn around and go into the room behind it in this machine and start facing as the other one's being completed. So we can work on basically two units at once. What this does is eliminate any human error, especially with the LEDs. Uh, the placement of the boards is extremely important. And it also helps with some of the other machines that we use to eliminate any mistakes and also have interchangeability. Right now we're in the fixture department and Todd Wallace and Danny Smith, both of them been here close to 24 years. Again, showing the longevity and, and loyalty of the, our, our workers. Right now we're making a luminaire for the city of Jenkintown, or borough of Jenkintown, Pennsylvania.
And this particular fixture is our Franklin Square, and it is a 100 watt metal halide luminaire. Still using HID, of course. That's the high intensity discharge lamps that we talked about um, earlier today. Now this particular fixture is a horizontal lamp application and we achieve those uh, certain distributions. Obviously, we start with our engineering firm or engineering side of the company up front in the office where we talked about the photometric engineering and design of the reflector systems. Um, we get these light distributions by a few different ways of dispersing the light. Refraction uh, by using internal refractors. Uh, re uh, this particular luminaire has a hydroform reflector in it and we'll show you that as Todd brings it over to the lineup of the fixtures. This is the hydroform reflector that I was talking about. Thanks Todd. You can see this is where our ballast housing is. This is where the lamp goes and it's a horizontal application so it meets the cutoff requirements and this is just one other method of how we disperse the light. Thanks, Todd. This is our fluting machine. We're one of three companies in the United States that flutes steel. And basically what this system is, is what you're looking at right here is the steel mandrel. And we slide a smooth tapered tube over that mandrel, as you can see here. And it's compressed with these wheels as they press into the valley of the mandrel which is called a cold forming process. And it's about 30,000 pounds per square inch that's pressing that steel down into the valley and creating that flute. Now steel fluting projects are usually projects that we do where the pole height exceeds 16, 17 feet. Typically cast iron product is not uh, made any taller than that for the economies as well as just the size and scope of it. Uh, steel offers a, a much less expensive product, but it, it enables you to really uh, be utilized. So you'll see applications such as banner poles or tall 40-foot roadway poles. It, it really enables you to get to heights that you wouldn't be able to do with a one-piece cast iron pole. We do a lot of steel products with um, the city of Boston. Um, roadway poles for Washington, D.C. Um, the city of Norristown, Pennsylvania is an iron and steel combination. Um, Bloomsburg is an iron and steel, and Kutztown that we've done is an iron and steel. So there are plenty of projects um, that utilize this application. Right now we're looking at the midsection of the fluted machine, and you're seeing the hydraulic piston push the smooth tapered shaft into the rollers where it's compressing at 30 plus thousand pounds and forming that cold flute into the steel shaft. Where we're at now is at our wet painting facility located on, on site. And this particular gentleman is spraying Acrylon paint system, which is a wet paint system provided by Sherwin-Williams. It's a really great paint system and we've been using it for the last eight to ten years, uh, part of the system that, that we're in the benefits of it is its quick drying time. It's very durable. Obviously with a quick drying time it allows us to move the product and within 24 hours wrap it and get it ready to ship. It also is extremely well and vandal resistant, meaning the paint system is extremely durable to where the, if there's anybody who tries to put graffiti or sprays another type of paint on top of it, it can be removed very easily. Um, the, the, the third issue with uh, the Acrylon paint system by Sherwin-Williams is its low VCs, which is volatile organic compounds. It, it doesn't emit any very low uh, toxins, so it's also a very safe paint system, which the environmental control um, really like, as well as our workers. We also utilize a powder coating facility, which is within an hour away. It's Keystone um, Products, 
which is a local powder coating facility. And when the product uh, is specified and it needs to be powder coated, we utilize another Pennsylvania company to assist us in that. We're now on one of the loading pads where you can see an example of the shipping material that we're using uh, to protect our poles. We use a rubberized wrap and then we shrink wrap around these cast iron poles. Obviously because of the weight um, and any movement around when you're using heavy equipment to move these around, there's a chance for these to get scraped up. So we found that this material is the best material to utilize uh, and to minimize any damage. Um, after they're wrapped, we take them to our loading dock and we load them on the uh, our dedicated truck service that we have. We have some rigs of, of our own, uh, uh, some 24-foot stake body vehicles. Obviously, the best way uh, with this heavy material is not to handle it. You don't want to ship this product common carrier because if it does move around, it'll damage and it'll damage everything else around it. So we ship predominantly dedicated truck. The product gets there um, and both the end user, the contractor and customer are satisfied with the shipment because of how we wrap, how we load and the trucking firm that we use. What you're looking at right now is a New York City M arm. And this arm actually slides on these tails when it's finished and will go on top of the Bishop's Crook pole. That takes the pole about 14 feet up to 20, 26 feet, and the fixture hangs off the end of that arm. There's thousands of these poles in New York City, and we're fortunate to be the ones who have manufactured them over the years. Next to this M arm is the Washington number 16 pole, and this particular pole, um, again, thousands of them installed in DC. This is getting ready to go into the finished paint. We do do primer and we do do ship the product in finished paint. That's a 13 foot two pole. This particular post is a, one of my favorites. It's a, it's a Madison pole and you can see how decorative it is. You'll see these poles in Central Park in New York City, uh, this, uh, as well as uh, the streets of Royersford, PA. And this particular setup is going to our own Lansdale, Pennsylvania. The base next to it is kind of its big brother. You can see similarities in the style of the base. Um, this particular base goes to the city of Norristown, Pennsylvania, and it wraps around the steel shafts as we talked about um, uh, when, when we visited the fluting machine. So the steel shaft, this is actually a two-piece casting, and it'll wrap around that steel shaft to give it its decorative look. And finally, the Bishop's Crook Pole. You saw it today being manufactured. Um, it's one of my favorites. This is still in its primer stage and it will be going into the finishing paint department probably tomorrow. Uh, it's just, you know, the beauty of this casting and the intricacies of the, the tooling that create this pa uh, particular pole is why it's one of my favorites. And again, there's thousands of these in the city of New York, Bishop's Crook and the M arms that you see um, that grace the city of New York. That pretty much ends the tour that you've seen here at Spring City. Uh, we'd like to thank PCN Tours for coming in and being able to tell the Spring City story where a small town in Pennsylvania with 110 employees are able to be the major provider of decorative street cast iron and aluminum fixtures all across the country. New York City, Boston, DC, Philadelphia, the major cities, even gracing the main streets of Walt Disney here in the States and abroad, and of course our wonderful capital in both Harrisburg as well as our nation's capital. We thank you and we hope you've learned something and when you walk down the streets, you're able to look at these poles and wonder, hey, if these were made in Spring City and the pride and craftsmanship that goes into it.